Welcome to IBS Precision Engineering. My name is uh, Theresa Spanberg. I'm the Innovation Director at IBS and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, software-based accuracy improvement of five-axis machine tools by compensation of rotary axis errors. Uh, many of you here will know about uh, five-axis uh, machining and the advantages that brings, but uh, nowadays it's used uh, often where complex and freeform uh, shapes must be made, for example, in impellers for uh, engines. Um, it has great advantages, five-axis machining, in terms of uh, uh, achieving those complex structures, but um, when you're actually using these machining centers, what you do is the continuous, there are continuous movements between uh, the spindle, which has the cutting tool, and the table, which has the workpiece that you're cutting. And there has to be a, a synchronized alignment between the linear axis uh, from the cutting tool and the uh, rotary axis, which typically you have your product on. That correct relative alignment is absolutely critical, critical for achieving the geometrical uh, tolerances you need in your product. Um, what we've done in the, this work is, uh, I'm going to tell you about some of the kinematic tests that we've done uh, to test the accuracy of those five, uh, five accuracy, uh, five axis machine tools and their accuracy in this uh, manner. How do we do that? Uh, we have a system called the Rotary Inspector and that consists of a measurement probe which is placed in the spindle to replace the uh, cutting tool and uh, and a high accuracy uh, master ball which is placed on the table uh, where the product would be. And then we apply a set of uh, measurements uh, based on the ISO um, standards which allow us to extract the errors in the machine and then correct those uh, errors. To give you an overview of how it works, what you can see um, here is uh, you'll see uh, the yellow master ball. This is looking down on the table from above, you'll see the yellow master ball. Um, on the uh, table and the probe sits over uh, the master ball. And what we ask, the, what we ask um, in the test is the two to move together. So the table rotates and the linear axes also do a rotation. And in a perfect uh, system, they basically almost hold hands and rotate together. Um, if they're not well aligned to each other, then as they make that rotation, then you will see those uh, errors occur as it goes around in a circle. So if we think that the, um, where do these errors come from? If this is the center of rotation of the uh, table, but uh, in physical terms, but if the, you should see a nice rotation like this, but actually if the machine itself thinks its center of rotation is somewhere else, so it's been programmed in a different way, what happens is uh, the linear axis will move around one point and the rotary table will move around another. And you can see what will happen is as you rotate, you will see uh, the, the, the ball and the probe come in and out of synchronization with you. And from those errors, we can, we can measure uh, what the errors on the table are. This is a so-called XOC, these are ISO errors, and that's the X offset of the C. The C is the C axis, so this is the rotary table going here, and it's how much it's offset in X and how much it's offset in Y, and we can then correct it, and we can make a better machine uh, by correcting those. Um, Errors. If you look sideways on for the same uh, um, uh, system, then what you'll see again, you see the offset between the, the real and the expected uh, position. And uh, what you'll see is, uh, again, you'll see it go in and out of synchronization. So if you looked in this plane, X, Z, X, you would see uh, this kind of effect from the front view. And again, you'll see the X and C. And what if your table is tipped? Because you could have an issue where the table is tipped relative to your linear axis. And this is what you will uh, see. So it will go up and down uh, as you rotate. So we can do a full 3D error. As we rotate, we can see in all three dimensions, we're able to look at these uh, errors. And, move, and that's from the, if you look from the other direction, then you'll see it going up and down in this manner. Yep. So, um, what do we do? These tests are all uh, um, derived, the tests that we uh, implement in this uh, system are derived from ISO. And what does ISO say? Uh, ISO says that how do you test? What you do is uh, you take your first rotary axis, and that's what they'll call the K1, and you basically uh, have uh, two, uh, say an X and a 
uh, y following the other two. So the, the table rotates and two axes rotate with it. Then you take the second table and you rotate the other two axes. And then at the end, what you do is you do a full ax, uh, five axis uh, motion where you move both tables, and they're all three linear at the same time. And that will give you your overall accuracy. And I'll show you that in practice. So there's a nice video of it uh, in practice uh, on a machine. And what you'll see now, this is called the BK1 measurement. So you, first, you see the A axis, uh, which is around the X, moving and the Y and Z linear. So that's the first table going, and then it will come back in again. And this is uh, called BK2. So now when we do this measurement, we're measuring all the errors in the, in the, um, the what they call the pivot line, where it's pivoting about the squares of that second rotary axis. So now we've measured the uh, areas in that second rotary axis, and now this one will actually, the BK4, will measure, move everything together, and we can make an overall test of how accurate it is, because these are the sort of movements you would make when you're making a complex. So we're testing the whole volume then. Yeah. So that's the uh, essence how it works. As soon as you've made a measurement like this, the system will actually give you a standard report, and it will show you, as you can see on the second sheet, uh, uh, the the errors that we get. We can extract many errors, but in this case we extract the pivot line, so where, where is it, where's the centre point of the table, and also how square it is. So the upper one is the first table, the second one is the second table. This uh, here is actually showing you the overall accuracy, and I'll come back to that later, but it's a way of us telling you, as a whole five-axis machine, what's, how can we assess this uh, system. So. Um, this is a, a case study, shall we say, of uh, two effects uh, within the machine where you can have uh, errors uh, about your pivot point for the rotary table. One could be geometrical. Now, where does this come from? When you actually build the system in the first place, it may actually be built slightly off. Uh, we hope not, but uh, that can happen. Uh, I'll just take that as well. Um, sorry, I'm going backwards. We should be able to get the second video working, but maybe not. Um, yeah, so it could come from when you actually first built the machine, or it could come from something such as a, um, a, a collision during uh, use. So you may actually misalign something because uh, because you, you've uh, hit it. Um, video is not working. Um, what we've done here is we did a measurement on a machine, the DMU50, as you can see here, and applied compensation to it and looked at the three axis uh, measurement and saw um, what we do is measure the errors, compensate the errors, and then measure again to see. And what you can see in the graphs of the pivot points and the squareness is that uh, after multiple, uh, we do it iterative, we repeat the compensation a couple of times, and um, you will see that the errors are getting much smaller and smaller. You'll notice something interesting here in the, as we move from step one to step two here, we've corrected the squareness, uh, the squareness goes down and the pivot point errors go up. And the reason is we correct all the errors at once, but because we're actually including the tipping one, the first time round when you correct it, you correct the tipping, and because of that, the pivot point, the position, seems to shift worse. But then once you've got that right, then you correct again, and it uh, comes in. What we saw in this case, which was quite unusual, was the fact that um, the three axis measurements, so one table and another table, showed us that everything was improving. So then when we came to the five axis test, uh, we have an overall figure for the accuracy that should get better. But uh, we noticed something strange in that uh, case. What happened was, um, this was how the machine was before we compensated at all, and we had an overall accuracy of 69 uh, microns. Uh, what is this graph showing you? This is the deviation as we do one measurement, one rotation like this. What is the deviation in the x, y, and z direction during that one sweep? And the span of that, the worst from the top to the bottom, gives you an indication of single figure for the, the worst case accuracy in that volume. This is about 69 uh, microns before we improved anything. Um, so what we noticed though was something very odd in this machine. Um, because we did a compensation, uh, when we changed the pivot points we saw an improvement, and then we changed the squareness, and then, uh, so we improved to 38 microns, but then we did another squareness uh, step and we saw that actually uh, it, uh, it, sorry, it had gone down to 19, it went back up again. So as we uh, corrected, 
it went down and then back up again when we applied and we thought this is odd we should everything should from a fiber axis point of view just get better 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 and it didn't so we did some investigations into that to see what on earth was going on with this machine um, as you can see when we only did a pivot point correction we saw 90 microns and when we actually did a pivot point and square now so we put it flat and moved it then uh, it went back up again so what we did was this um, we actually measured at two points on the machine uh, in, in a perfect system we placed the ball on the machine in this circuit called uh, BK1 uh, test and we uh, placed the ball on the machine um, say at uh, minus 177 in Y so, um, and then measure if we uh, what we did was just to check what was going on we measured at a different point along the Y axis so again this is looking down on the machine so you can see uh, below the, the board is closer to you and in the upper picture we did a measurement there in theory uh, for the measurement we're doing we shouldn't see any change in this what uh, as we move we're moving in the um, YZ plane to, to, to measure um, and we shouldn't see any difference between the two uh, but what happened in practice was we really did see a difference uh, between the two and particularly here you can see in the Z of B which is the the B is the, the Y axis, the line of the Y axis, and in Z it was changing dramatically. So as we move, say, from the front of the machine further back, we really saw a shift in where the rotary table was uh, centered. And it was about 18 microns, that's a lot. Yeah? So uh, what does that tell us? What it tells us is um, that actually it's tipped, the whole axis was tipped. So if you look at the green line in this uh, picture here, which is the B-axis, it was tipping uh, like this. So if you measure here and then measure here, you were seeing a difference in your errors because of that tipping. We could uh, estimate that error because we knew the distance between the points uh, and, and we also knew what the difference in the error was. And uh, we could correct that through the um, A or B because the A or B error in the machine coordinator is a, a controller is actually correcting the, the tip of uh, the Y uh, um, axis. So we applied that um, error, uh, that correction to the AOB and then started again right from the beginning. And then we had a look and what you find is the following. Uh, so we used BK1 and BK2 to correct the pivot line and squareness, but we did it with and without correction of this XZ non-orthogonality. What it means is you haven't got this, you've got one uh, uh, Y was tipped. Uh, and what we saw was if uh, after compensation, if we didn't correct for this, then we got 38 microns, and if we actually corrected for this, we got 15 microns. So it showed that actually we had to, we picked up that the axis itself had a problem and we needed to uh, correct that. Um, so what that does is give you a nice improvement on um, uh, your machine, but it says be very careful if you're going to put, apply this compensation, make sure you always do a five axis test to check that uh, you've actually improved the overall accuracy. I'm going to finish up with just a couple of slides on uh, thermal stability. So you made your uh, machine perfect, uh, what else can uh, bring in something that causes you a problem? Okay, uh, as the machine heats up, that can also distort your machine. And this was a test that we did um, uh, on uh, another uh, DMU uh, machine. And typically what you do to test these things is you uh, rotate your spindle very fast and uh, use that for a period of time to heat up. What we did in this case was repeatedly do our BK1, BK2 test. We went round. And that actually is kind of in line with the new standard for testing uh, heating. So we did it for half an hour and we repeated, repeated and got the machine warmer and warmer and then measured what happened. Um, as you said, this is in line with the new um, tests uh, with ISO. What was the result? We saw that over that 30 minute period, we actually um, saw a shift in the, uh, the Z positioning of the B axis by 11 microns and the X by 5. And if we look at the C axis, we saw uh, the X position from the second table has uh, moved by 9 microns and 7. So what this is showing up, even over 30 minutes with a relatively easy warm up, uh, we saw a significant uh, reduction in, uh, uh, sort of increase in the errors. The measurement time is only one and a half to one to one and a half minutes. What this means is you could do a snapshot of your machine and correct for this. Yeah. Okay. To summarise, 
Okay, what have we done? Uh, showed you a bit about the rotary inspector system for measuring 5-axis machines. Uh, it takes you about one minute to measure the system and gives you a snapshot of the accuracy. It allows you to analyse the pivot line position and squareness. Uh, it does many other things, but you automatically see this. That pivot line position can vary in time. You can have geometrical errors, which will give you, um, uh, which, are, which come from build or, or, or use, shall we say. And you can also say thermal induced errors. And we've seen up to 10 microns on uh, decent machines uh, over 30 minutes. Uh, but we often see the squareness errors are typically much uh, smaller. So if you're applying it for compensation, so it's great, you can do it within minutes, you can compensate your machine. But you must use your fire axis test to make sure that uh, you that the uh, corrections that you applied are, are, don't have any other effects in them because that's your final test of the quality of the machine and how you've improved it. Uh, and we found that we can actually make improvements up to a factor of 5 or 10. Okay, thank you.